In film number one, we saw how a change in gas rate affected the flowing pressure gradient of the well. In film number two, we found that a reduction in gas rate below a certain point would allow a well to die. In this third film in the series, we will study the effect of gas rates and depth of injection on well performance. Our study of gas rate effects will consider the effects of both formation gas and injected gas. Let's start by considering only formation gas. Here we see the well in a natural flowing condition with all of the energy being supplied by gas from the reservoir. The adjustable needle valve is closed. Input gas is not being used and the gas lift valves are closed. The well is producing 1,000 barrels per day and 400 MCF per day of gas from the reservoir, or at a gas to liquid ratio of 400 cubic feet of gas per barrel of liquid. Flowing wellhead pressure is 120 PSI, and flowing bottom hole pressure is 470 PSI. Now, we will increase the gas production rate from 400 to 600 MCF per day or a gas to liquid ratio of greater than 400 cubic feet per barrel and observe the results. The production remains unchanged at 1,000 barrels per day because the flowing bottom hole pressure also remains unchanged at 470 PSI. But why didn't the flowing bottom hole pressure change? After all, the additional gas means a decreased pressure gradient in the tubing. The answer lies in the flowing wellhead pressure that increased from 120 to 170 PSI. The additional gas causes a higher pressure loss in the surface flow line to the separator, and this surface pressure increase counterbalances the reduced pressure gradient in the tubing. Even further gas injection beyond a certain point can cause an increased pressure loss in the tubing and cause the flowing bottom hole pressure to increase to 560 PSI, as you see here. So we see that in some instances, an increase in the gas to liquid ratio does not necessarily cause an increase in liquid production rate. Returning the well settings to the 400 MCF per day rate, we note that liquid production remains 1,000 barrels per day, while flowing wellhead pressure drops to 120 PSI as before, and flowing bottom hole pressure remains 470 PSI. Let's reduce the formation gas rate from 400 to 300 MCF per day. Allowing a few moments for the well model to stabilize, we see that the production is now 970 barrels per day, which gives a 310 to 1 gas to liquid ratio. So, a reduction of 100 MCF per day causes the production to decline 30 barrels per day to 970 barrels per day. As we further reduce the gas rate from 300 to 150 MCF per day, and the corresponding gas to liquid ratio from 310 to 1 to 200 to 1, we find that production has dropped to 750 barrels per day. Hence, the total reduction in gas to liquid ratio from 310 to 1 to 200 to 1 has caused an overall production decline from 1,000 to 750 or a decrease of 250 barrels per day. From the four examples we have observed, we can say that within limits, liquid production decreases as the gas to liquid ratio decreases. Or stated another way, that liquid production increases as the gas to liquid ratio increases, up to a point where further increases simply replace liquid with gas and no further increase occurs in liquid production. This concludes our discussion of formation gas effects. Now let's consider injected gas.
If we assume that the model has shown us an example of a flowing well's normal decline in liquid as the amount of formation gas declines, then it follows that if the gas to liquid ratio could be held steady at the higher rate, then liquid production would also be steady at the higher rate. The present gas rate of 150 MCF per day is producing 750 barrels per day. This is a 200 to 1 gas liquid ratio. We will use the gas lift valves to add 200 MCF per day to bring the total gas rate back up to the original rate of 400 MCF per day. The 200 MCF per day input gas added to the original 150 MCF per day formation gas totals only 350. But we notice that the formation gas meter is now reading 200 MCF per day. Thus, formation gas production has increased 50 MCF per day due to the lighter pressure gradient caused by the addition of the input gas. Checking the liquid meter, we see that the well is again producing 1,000 barrels per day, that the gas to liquid ratio again is 400 to 1, and that the flowing bottom hole pressure has returned to 470 PSI. So, input gas can be used to supplement formation gas to maintain full liquid production. As formation gas decreases to zero, liquid production can be maintained by gas from the gas lift valves only. To illustrate, we will close off formation gas and reset the adjustable needle valve on the input gas line to 400 MCF per day. Now all the gas is being injected through the gas lift valve at 2350 feet and production is 900 barrels per day. Now let's consider the depth of gas injection. Note that in this example we have just completed 400 MCF per day of input gas injected into the tubing through the gas lift valve at 2350 feet does not produce as much liquid as does 400 MCF per day of formation gas from the perforations at 2740 feet. Why is this? If we check the flowing bottom hole pressure, we find that in this instance it reads 520 PSI. When all gas was formation gas from the perforations, the flowing bottom hole pressure was 470 PSI or 50 PSI lower. In film number two, we saw that for any given well, as the flowing bottom hole pressure increases, production decreases which is what we see here. But what caused the flowing bottom hole pressure to increase? Let's look and see. The 400 MCF per day gas from formation was reducing the pressure gradient in the tubing all the way from the perforations at 2740 feet to the surface. But as you see on the right, the 400 MCF per day input gas at the 2350 foot gas lift valve was reducing the pressure gradient in the tubing only from 2350 feet to the surface. Hence, the 390 feet of tubing below the bottom gas lift valve at 2350 feet to the perforations at 2740 feet contains no gas. Since its gradient is not decreased, it exerts more pressure on the formation, consequently the flowing bottom hole pressure is higher by 50 PSI and production is less by 100 barrels per day. From this observation, we can state that for any given gas rate, the deeper the point of gas injection, the greater the liquid production will be. This observation also means that the deeper the point of gas injection, the lower is the gas to liquid ratio that is required for a given liquid production rate. However, this conclusion is only valid if the maximum capacity of the well tubing or the surface facilities has not been reached. 
To summarize, one, liquid production increases as gas rate increases, up to a point. Two, input gas can be used as a supplement to formation gas to maintain maximum production. Three, for any given well, production increases with depth of gas injection, up to a point.